here this Sunday after Christmas. We're going to have a slightly different experience today. And we are not going to be using our normal slides format. So I'm going to ask for your kindness and mercy <laughs> and patience as we try something a little different. So we'll start our service today as we normally do with um, a welcome from a member of our board. Jennifer Askey is representing the board this morning. Good morning all. Um, as Leanne said, I'm Jennifer Askey and I serve um, the UCE as a member of the board. Um, and I welcome you to our online Zoom service this morning. The Unitarian Church of Edmonton is a liberal, multi-generational religious community. We celebrate a rich mosaic of free thinking, spiritually questing individuals joined in common support and action. Whether you have been part of our congregation for decades <clears throat> or this is your first time visiting, we welcome you. Whatever faith, traditions are part of your past, we welcome you. Whatever your theological stance, we welcome you. Whatever your heritage, we welcome you. Whoever you are and whomever you love, we welcome you the whole of you. We especially welcome any visitors who might be with us today and invite you to join the conversation in the breakout rooms once the service has ended. I would also like to acknowledge today that we are on Treaty 6 territory, the home of the First, of First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples for centuries. A treaty is an inheritance and a responsibility and a relationship. May we be good neighbors to one another, good stewards to our planet, and good ancestors to all of our children. Good morning. I'm Reverend Leanne Washington, and I'm serving the Unitarian Church of Edmonton as its minister during the interim between settled ministers. Ruth Patrick joins me this morning to read the words selected for our chalice lighting and at the, be at the beginning of our service and the chalice extinguishing at the end. This past week, we've had opportunities to share what is making us blue and what is giving us joy. So we will not be sharing candles of connection during this service. The spiritual practice of sharing candles of connection will resume in January. The theme for the month of December is stillness. Stillness is the art of finding inner peace. Finding inner peace in ways that include our mind, our heart, our spirit. And it isn't just sitting still and thinking nothing. Finding inner peace is a lifelong continuous process. That doesn't mean that it isn't achievable. It just means that with every new circumstances that arise, a new opportunity to find that inner peace also arises. Today, we'll experience three different ways to practice stillness for three very different circumstances. Stillness practice connects us to our truest selves and to others. Stillness practice connects us to the oneness of all. As Eckhart Tolle explains, in the stillness of your presence, you can feel your own formless and timeless reality as the unmanifested life that animates your physical form. 
You can then feel the same life deep within every human and every creature. You look beyond the veil of form and separation. This is the realization of oneness. This is love. This morning, we begin our service as Unitarian Universalists around the world do by lighting a chalice. While I light my home chalice and place it here where you'll be able to see it, Ruth Patrick will read, Let This Be a Place of Silence by Barbara Stevens. Let this place be a place of warm and gentle silence. The silence that soothes and comforts the wounded. The silence that yields insights into heart and soul. The silence that calms. The silence that listens. The silence that speaks. The silence that renews. Let this be a place of warm and gentle silence. Were you all able to hear that? Okay. The silence was appropriate. Thank you. Then we will just continue on. Maybe we'll give it a, a try again at the end of the service. So since March, our 
community, you know, all of us have been living in kind of two very different states of being. Some of us who are continuing to work and um, continuing to run errands, sometimes running them for people who are staying home for good reason during this COVID time. Some of us have had to make radical changes to our work environment. People in the food service industry have had to make cleaning um, protocols that they didn't have before so much more stringent than anything the health department has ever asked of them. Buy new chairs and tables and maybe tents and umbrellas, train people to um, handle food and speak to customers differently. In the school systems, they've had to install plastic or, or you know, various kinds of barriers. Office places have had to move people around and buy new equipment and rethink how conversations take place. For people in that sphere, people living like that, there's all the normal expectations to, to produce, to tick off the to-do lists, to, um, you know, make the sale, uh, do whatever it is that brings in the money, be focused on the job. While at the same time, so many things have changed in our everyday living that there is no doing things like we did before. And that, and that causes an enormous amount of stress and anxiety and frankly, just fatigue. And then there are those of us who have been staying home, hardly ever going out, rarely getting to see a person face to face, in the flesh, so to speak. Feeling as though days go by so slowly, trying to figure out what to do in a day after the basic dishwashing has been done and the clothes are clean and the floor has been mopped and what next? Do we spend the day watching TV and surfing on, our, on the internet? Uh, do we read books? Or do we just by now feel like it's all too much? too much aloneness. And if you're in that situation, the whole notion of stillness as a spiritual practice might seem a little humorous to you or frustrating to you because you might be thinking, I've had plenty of aloneness and stillness, thank you. I can't wait to get out there into the world and start doing things again. And I certainly, certainly understand that. What we're talking about here today is something that both those of us who have got twice as much to do in an uncertain and strange new world as those who are being kept from doing the things they want to do. Because this idea of stillness, it's an intentional thing. It's it's not just about sitting quietly, it's about going inward. It's about calming the noise both inside and outside of our brains. It's an art of sorts. It's the art of finding inner peace. And you know, what's interesting about that is while it can be something of a challenge to find that inner peace.
it is something that when achieved can be so, so helpful to us as we go through life. It helps us no longer react to a lot of the ego-based thoughts that arise in our minds. Thoughts that often create barriers between ourselves and others. Being still is welcoming a kind of mindfulness, a self-awareness, a pure presence, which creates space around our thoughts and our emotional reactions. So that in that space, we can be our better selves. We can see more than just our own perspective. We can become more compassionate, more empathic, and ultimately kinder to ourselves. Now, why would you want to do this? I can think of three reasons that come to mind easily, and I expect that if you did a Google search, there'd be many, many more. Stillness practice slows down our nervous system responses to stimuli. It reduces anxiety and agitation and frustration. It gives you that buffer, as I said. It also increases energy, psychological energy, emotional energy, and even physical energy. A regular stillness practice can help you go deep into the wells of energy that you have and restore them. And then you can find that you have more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Stamina, more stamina, more endurance. And it also helps us connect to ourselves. It provides clarity and increases confidence and self-possession. When we understand stillness as a state of mind, we can find it anywhere and under any circumstances, even in the middle of a hectic day or a crowd of people. Deepak Chopra supports that idea when he says, do not let the behavior, no, sorry, when he says in the midst of movement and chaos, keep stillness inside yourself. When you achieve this, all hell can break loose around you and you can move through it, think more clearly, feel less buffeted about, and come through the chaos whole. The Dalai Lama admonishes us to not let the behavior of others destroy, destroy our inner peace. How many times are we in situations where someone else's behavior angers us, frustrates us, hurts us? And then how long do we hold on to that? That anger or hurt or frustration? How many times do we repeat what happened in our minds, in our heads? Like through the day, we go back to it about the slight or the disrespect or the, you know, criticism or angry words that we heard. That takes an enormous amount of energy and joy from our lives. A regular stillness practice ha helps to balance that, helps to be an antidote to that. You can cultivate stillness while walking on a busy street, while chaos swirls all around you. Karen Lawson, a doctor of psychology and a clinical director, says some of the coolest experiences she has are being in the busiest of places. 
taking a deep breath and going into that place of stillness, of peace of mind and peace of heart. The key is to be intentional. Now, there are different levels of stillness practice, of course, and there are different circumstances in which you would maybe want to do different things. The first level, the simplest level, what most of us have been uh, exposed to is just the simple being quiet or repeating healing phrases. And so you all are at home. We're going to take a moment and try something that will, well, that you will do there in your home, in your circumstances. Now, the first thing I would say is that some people find it helpful to arrange an environment for themselves. So some people like to turn down the lights turn off variable sounds, by which I mean things that vacillate, you know, different tones, different sounds. So you want to turn off the radio or the TV or whatever's on the internet. You know, close the door. Some people will choose to close their eyes. Some to focus on one particular thing that represents stillness to them. So if you look around your room where you are, if you don't want to close your eyes, you might look at a poinsettia I see in several of your homes, or look at a painting that you have, or look out the window. And then some people, because it's hard to keep your mind quiet, like to listen to soft music. So I'm going to suggest that we take three minutes, take some deep breaths. And when I say deep breaths, here's the thing. A lot of us do this dramatic big breath and hold on to it tight and then let it go slowly. Well, that's really artificial. So let's not do that. When I say take a deep breath, I do hope that you'll do it from your tummy area if you can do that. But just simply take a breath that is deeper than your normal breath, just good and, and let go. You don't have to hold it for any particular length of time. You don't want to be physically uncomfortable. And I'm going to offer you four phrases, if you'd like to focus on a phrase, and we're just going to do this for three minutes. All right, it's just short, it's three minutes. The phrases I offer to you are, I am calm and still, or I can create stillness, or stillness refreshes me, or stillness calms me. Now we haven't started yet because I'm still talking. You'll know we've started when I stop talking. I, I'm not a person who, who likes guided meditations while we pretend to be meditating while someone is talking at us. <laughs> and I see, this is lovely. This is so unique for me because I get to see you all. And I see a number of you already moving into, moving into this uh, position and this space. And the final one, still, stillness calms me. Now, let me just say one more thing. And for those of you who've been interested in any form of meditation, you've heard this numerous times. If you're not, if you're repeating a phrase, then you focus on the phrase. Just focus on the phrase, nice and easy, breathing comfortably, deeply. If you are not focusing on a phrase, then whenever a thought comes to you, just say hello to it and say later. And then just Start again, focusing on your breathing and emptying your mind. And another thought comes, that's okay. You just say hello, later, and go back to breathing. All right, now we start.
Did you all hear anything? Susan, did you all hear anything? Just half of it, then it stopped. Stopped halfway through. Okay. I didn't know if you were hearing it. I'll let it continue.
I'm not hearing anything now. But you heard the first part. No. Yeah. Okay. That, okay. Thank you. All right. So that is just the basic, uh, you know, take a moment, center yourself, spend some time being quiet and still. But since this isn't really about just sitting still or having an empty mind, there are other ways, interactive ways, that we can practice this kind of peace of mind and peace of heart and peace of spirit. What we're going to explore now is deep listening. Some of you may actually have been trained in deep listening. Deep listening is when you allow the other person to speak to you and you are not thinking about what your response is going to be. In fact, you're not going to respond at all with something about yourself. If you do respond, the response is to say something that prompts the person to share more deeply. So it's a, it's a question. Your response might be a question. Like, how did that make you feel? Or what happened next? Or uh, were there any repercussions from that? Or have you learned anything from that? And you're not thinking, oh, well, that sounds like something that happened to me. I'll tell her all about that. Or, boy, I would never do that. I'm going to let him know that, you know, that must have been a really unusual circumstance because, gosh, nobody would really do it that way. Or, oh, I know exactly what they need to do. They need to read this book and then take talk to this person. And, you know, we're not going to do that either. So in this exercise, we're going to deeply listen to each other. We have 44 participants. So if Susan and I are not participating or we're a, a group, we could have groups of two. And this time we're going to spend about um, 10 minutes together. And that will give each person in the group of two, five minutes. So one person, tells a story and the other person deeply listens. And that's what we're learning is the skill to deeply listen. So as you listen, you're thinking of, you're hearing what the person is saying. And if you're going to respond at all, it's going to be to ask a question or make a comment that makes, that has them go deeper. All right, you're not gonna reciprocate by sharing about yourself and then at the five minute point, <clears throat> we'll send you a, a little message and you'll switch over and the other person will tell a story. And, uh, and then, you know, you just switch the roles. The other, the other other person, I didn't say that very well, but you know what I mean. You'll switch <laughs> roles. Um, so I'm gonna suggest that you pick something that is relatively benign but was a little story about being frustrated with someone or, um, or, you know, just a minor annoyance, that sort of thing. When someone recently annoyed you or frustrated you, or maybe you intended to do one thing and that person sort of inadvertently totally messed up your plans. All right. So we'll give you a few seconds to think about that. And then you'll have five minutes to share your, each of your stories and five minutes to listen. You want the breakout rooms now? 
Yes, I think we can do that now. We'll just randomly assign people. Okay. Here my screen again. Can you hear it? So for the <clears throat> so for the sake of time, we won't be doing our third practice today, but we will do it. Um, we will do it soon. I want to describe it to you, and I want to explain the relationship it has with what we've just done. The final. Uh, practice that I'd hope that we would share today is about deep reflection. Sitting quietly and motivating or energizing, bringing to the fore not just your mind and just your thinking, but your heart, your feeling, and your spirit those things that you value, those ways of being that we seek to embody. So here's a description of the practice that we will not be doing, but which is kind of a, a is builds on the first two. So the first one was simply how do we just be with ourselves? How do we empty ourselves, our minds, or how do we focus on an image or on a phrase so that all that noise and static goes away and we can feel refreshed. 
And then the second one was about how do we really listen to someone? How do we, how do we uh, become able to focus on the person so much that the only thing that comes to us is how can we ask them to go deeper? How can we better understand what they're trying to tell us? And um, this third practice is how do we bring all of that to our own situations? So if we have a gnarly situation with another person or even with ourselves, because sometimes we can have conflict and contention uh, with ourselves, particularly in decision-making situations. So you create a space like we did in the first uh, meditation, in the first stillness exercise. And then we bring to mind that which is giving us anxiety or anxiousness or causing conflict. And so let's say it's conflict with another person. Could be minor, could be major. And we know inside that we aren't getting what we're supposed to get. We weren't treated well. We weren't respected. We wanted an advantage and we were thwarted. Something like that. And so we have to intentionally let go of that. We have to take a moment and say, okay, let me look at this situation from a different perspective. Let me let go of what I have invested in this and what I want out of it. And let me take a moment and be quiet and still. Let me consider the different perspectives of the other people involved. So let's say it's your boss, for those who are working, or for those who are staying home, uh, what if it's someone who provides a service for you? Mows the lawn or brings groceries or some service that you may use. Take a think about who is that person and then use the skills of deep listening, even though they aren't there, to what they might say to you. What is their story? What's going on with them? And ask those questions. You may or may not be right in the answers, but give the most generous answers you can and think about the clues that you have. Consider their perspective and then consider who else is affected by this disagreement or conflict and think about what they might say about how it's affecting them. And so those deep listening skills come into play. And then finally, what is the spiritual value you want to embody in this situation? Do you want to be patience? Do you want to be kindness? Do you want to be compassion or encouragement? And then consider what you have to do in the situation to embody that spiritual value. And sit with it for a while and then eventually let it go. I will write these up and we'll send them out in an email, maybe with the Friday email next week. Okay? Generosity is a spiritual practice.
building our staff, our programs, to be able to reach out to each other. Please visit our website at uce.ca to find the donation method that best suits you. For the month of December, we encourage you to also support RISE, which is Reconciliation and Solidarity Edmonton. Please visit their website for more information about them. Normally you would hear or sing from you I receive to you I give, but I don't have any way of offering that to you today. unless someone wants to volunteer to sing. No, <laughs> I see some shaking heads. No volunteers, okay. Our reading while, the extinguishing, while extinguishing the chalice is Now the Work of Christmas Begins by Howard Thurman and read by Ruth Patrick. As we extinguish the flame representing our sacred time together in beloved community, let us remember that when the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the princes and kings are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among the people, and to make music in the heart. Thank you. May you be peaceful and at ease. Before I share the benediction, I want to express our gratitude to those who helped make this service possible this morning. Our readers, Jennifer Askey and Ruth Patrick, Susan Rutan, our greeter and host, and Ruth Merritt, our service recorder. To all that is chaotic in you, let there come silence. Let there be a calming of the clamoring a stilling of the voices that have laid their claim on you, that have made their home in you, that go with you even to the holy places, but will not let you rest. That will not let you hear your life as a wholeness or feel the grace that fashioned you. Let what distracts you cease. Let what divides you cease. Let there come an end to what diminishes and demeans and let depart all that keeps you in its cage. Let there be an opening into the quiet that lies beneath the chaos where you find the peace you did not think possible and see what shimmers within the storm. Thank you, good hearty souls who have stayed with us throughout. This concludes our worship service this morning. Please feel free to take a short comfort break. And then we will once again, try to put you in breakout rooms, though you may stay in the main room with me I'll be here for about an hour. So if you'd like to take a quick comfort break, please feel free.